once the frames have been cleared of bees I brought back and uh, made ready to put in the extractor and uh, to do that you use this thing here which is called an uncapping tray um, it's got a mains connection here and there's water in here which you can hear hissing away and that hot water keeps this tray, this sliding tray warm and there's a bar that goes across here with a little uh, hole there and that's where the frames go uh, so to get the frames ready you have to go through this process called, called our uncapping and that is a full frame you can see it's all capped over top to bottom and on the other side as well so what you do is you put the, young, put the, the uh, frame in the hole there and use this thing which is called a Z knife or an uncapping knife and I leave it sort of resting in the hot water to get it hot you can buy electric ones of these that are insanely expensive but this will just get it hot enough and then what you do is you saw down the outside of the frame and you can see all the cappings comes off yep. and because these things are quite often fairly uneven you will have these dents and things so you use this like fork thing and you, know, you just want to uncap the honey so that the honey can be spun out and again I'll leave that in there to keep it hot turn it around to the other side and do the same thing again First of the frames ready, and to just go through all the other frames um, and repeat the process. Now I'll just leave that there, so it can fall over probably. So I'll just hold it up like that. Maybe not. I'll just move the camera a little bit so you can see what's going on here. Um, what will happen is that the uncappings like this stuff, if I drop it there, you can see it's starting to liquefy because it's quite warm and it collects in the bottom there. And what will happen is that it will warm it until the wax melts and the honey and wax mixture will come out of this pipe here into, uh, I use an ice cream container and so what will happen then is that you'll get a mixture of honey and wax um, you then leave, uh, move it away once it's full leave it to cool and what will happen is the wax will solidify on top of the honey then you can just take the honey away and put it in the extractor and you can see it's starting to, to drip out already. So that's what needs to be done and then once the frames are ready they're put into the extractor. The uh, next job to do is to spin the frames to get the honey out. I think that probably most starter beekeepers will start off with a a manual hand crank thing. These are basically like spin dryers and they just whiz and whiz and whiz around and they throw the honey out. Um, however, uh, it's really hard work and uh, as I often say you can always tell a beekeeper 
during the summer because his right home is like Popeye. However, what I've got is one of these things which is an electric one and this is made by a firm called Koenigan and what you do is you put all the frames in and there's nine in there and fairly obviously the thing spins around yep now um, to control it you have this thing here which you can take off if you wish um, now this is uh, an electric one and it's also programmable. Now, personally, I just want an on and an off button, but this goes beyond that. And you have lots of different sort of timing cycles and programs and stuff, um, which is great if you like that sort of thing, and I don't. Um, so I just use very simplest uh, of programs, which is basically spin, stop spinning. And what will happen is the honey will be thrown out of the uh, frames into the stainless steel container. Then eventually when that's finished, you can see there, there's a valve there where the honey will come out. Now, one of the things about these uh, electric ones is that they, they rotate very quickly indeed. Uh, and uh, they can be quite difficult to control. Even the hand ones that you do, the, the hand uh, cranked machines you can get, you find yourself adopting this rather odd stance where you grip it between your knees while you're frantically trying to uh, spin the thing as fast as you can. With this one it's not quite so bad except for the fact if you do put it on a smooth floor and turn your back on it you'll probably find it's danced its way out of the kitchen down the road. So I've discovered that if you put it on a sort of rough concrete floor like this it actually stays still which is great because it means that I can turn the thing on then go away and leave it and then come back and it's still in the place where I left it so let's program the thing and get it underway okay. and when you turn it on lights flash as lights ought to do Um, this has got a micro switch on the uh, the lid lock, which means you have to open it and then close it again, and it's ready to go. Uh, before you press the go button, you want to check that all of the frames are properly seated inside the extractor, because this goes at a very high speed indeed, and if they're not properly lined up they can jump out of the sockets uh, the slots rather where they are and it makes a mess and with these things because it is so uh, rapid you do need to try and make sure that uh, all the frames are balanced you don't put just three in on one side because it will just go yuck. right here we are with the um, programming thing now uh, I turn the speed down to a pretty low value simply because um, as I said these things can jump out so it's better to start on a low speed and build up rather than going full whack and all hell breaks loose. Uh, there's a program button which we can ignore for the time being then there's the uh, start stop button which we click and there we go Yeah, so that's okay. You can tell if it's getting a bit upset because it starts rumbling and making a, a bad noise. So I will, oops, sorry, turn it up a bit. Again, that's okay. Turn it up. You might be able to hear the honey being splattered against the side of the uh, the drum and uh, the valve is down there, that's where the honey will come out eventually. So we're on about half speed now, go up to three quarter speed and the honey's been thrown out on the side there, you can probably see it at the top. And um, 
it's not moving an inch, which is great. So I think I'll just leave it at that, and then we'll come back in five minutes' time and do the next part of it. It's ten minutes later, a bit more than actually, and all is as it should be. The spinner is still where I left it. It's still spinning away quite happily inside. And the lights are still going on and off. Now, what you do to get the most honey out of the frames is first to stop the thing. And it will start going backwards. There's some sort of braking system in there. And you have to wait for it to stop like that and squeak at you and then this is the only bit of programming you have to do if I press that and it squeaks at you now when I press start it goes around in the opposite direction so it throws the honey out of both sides uh, as much as it can do and um, so there we go just leave that for 10 minutes and then we'll come back another 10 minutes and it's still spinning lights are still going on which is good so now just turn it off So once the uh, spinners finish going round and round and round, the moment we've all been waiting for is the honey to come out. And there it is. It goes through a strainer that has two parts to it. It's like a tea strainer and the top one is very fine and the bottom one is very coarse. So it takes all the lumps of wax and bits and pieces that we don't want out of it and we strain it into a bucket. Next stage is then to uh, give it another uh, filtering just to take some of the uh, very fine stuff out of it and we'll do that next. Now uh, we have two tubs here of the uh, honey and wax that came out of the uh, uncapping tray there and it has cooled and I just zoom in and on the top there is a crust of wax and underneath it is the honey so all we got to do now is to uh, take the wax off and just strain the honey into a bucket so I'll just move it out very slightly. The wax should be fairly, that is, fairly easy to get out. Let's scrape the honey off that side. This bucket here is all of the um, slices of wax that I've collected from doing the uncapping so I'll just drop that in there the honey can go through the filter into the bucket way through. Same with the other one. Get most of the honey off. And underneath is just a some clear honey. Again, pour it into here. It 
it's already effectively been filtered going through the uncapping tray but it uh, doesn't do any harm to do it again and I'll just leave that on there so it can just empty itself in its own more time now I have a bucket of wax here and it's a fair amount in there and uh, what I'll do next is I'll just do a, a little section on um, what I do with this wax although it is quite clean you can see it's quite yellow that's that's yellow uh, when you turn it over sometimes you've got gunk on the back there that we want to get rid of before we can use this so I'll just briefly show you what I do with the wax is called rendering which is just basically cleaning it up Once the honey has been produced, most of it is stored away uh, to be used later and I've got three buckets down there and there's one there. Now although the honey obviously comes out uh, in a very liquid runny form, uh, if it's left for a long time uh, it can crystallise and this is what's happened to this one here and you can hear, if not see, that's pretty hard. So uh, that's granulated, crystallized, whatever you want to call it. And so what beekeepers will do is that they will warm it uh, very gently for a period of time and it will revert back to the sort of original uh, runny state. Um, nothing happens to it, it's just that uh, the crystals melt down and returns to its uh, sort of uh, original state. So what I use is this rather shabby looking thing. Uh, this is what's called a warming cabinet. And inside here is a tray that is slowly getting warm. And it's controlled by this thing here, a uh, thermometer. And it's set to just a degree or two above the uh, normal temperature of a beehive. Uh, you don't want to heat this thing too much and so this will very gently uh, reduce the honey down to its liquid state and will probably take a couple of days if not longer to do uh, so we'll come back in a few days and we can see how it's getting on the honey's been there for a couple of days now and uh, it has on to its natural liquid state so the last thing I do with it although it's been through a, a, um, a filter already that's to get the big lumps out is I use this thing which is a very fine mesh and that just gets out the sort of floaty bits that uh, the other um, filter didn't get and I will just perhaps you can see it uh, you can see some of the sort of scummy stuff that's on the top there. So I'll just pour this in here. There's a wasp. <laughs> and uh, Let it work its way through. Okay, that's about that's about half of the bucket done. But if I just angle this up, you might be able to see just all the very fine gunk that it's picked up and also a wasp so that does take some of the floaty stuff out um, and the honey under there looks very clear and um, so that's that's the second stage filtering that I do with it and finally the end product of all this effort from the bees and from me is this a jar of North Bedfordshire honey thanks for watching See you in a bit.